There's something magical about the taste of tea on a crisp morning with refreshing spring air. It's like a warm hug in a cup, soothing and calming, yet it's refined and sophisticated at the same time. Tea is not just a beverage, it's a lifestyle. It has been an integral part of human culture for centuries, bringing people together and providing comfort. From its origins in China to its status as a global favorite, tea has a long and fascinating history. People drink more tea on this planet than any other beverage except water. Leaf juice, metadonis, and beverages is very real. The history of tea dates back to ancient China, where it was first used for medicinal purposes. Legend has it that tea was discovered by accident when some tea leaves fell into a pot of boiling water. Anyways, the Emperor Shengnong, a renowned herbalist, tasted the resulting infusion and found it to be refreshing and energizing. From there, the popularity of tea grew rapidly and it soon became a staple in Chinese culture. Around the 17th century, tea was introduced to Europe where it quickly became a status symbol and a luxury item. Coffee's pretty great, but that's another video. Tea is science. Brewing is a delta reaction between alkaloids, polyphenols, carotenoids, vitamins, terpenes, and alkalides with dihydrogen monoxide as a chemical base. The different chemical makeups of plants require different conditions to release their inner goodness. Inner goodness isn't a scientific term, but I never pretended to be a scientist. At least not on this video. I'm just a VTuber. Don't at me. Tea is made from the leaves of the Camellia sinensis plant, which contains a number of chemicals that are responsible for its flavor and health benefits. The two main chemicals found in tea are caffeine and theanine. Caffeine is a natural stimulant that can improve mental alertness and concentration. It is the reason why many of us get up in the morning. It's the reason why many of us are able to keep our jobs. Theanine, on the other hand, is an amino acid that has a calming effect that can reduce stress and anxiety. In addition to caffeine, we also have antioxidants, which can help to reduce the risk of certain diseases. Numerous studies have shown that the polyphenols present in tea have antioxidant, anti-cancerous, and anti-inflammatory properties. Polyphenols help manage blood pressure levels, lower insulin resistance, and even activate the immune system. Excess tea will reduce the iron stores in the liver. There is plenty of evidence that regularly drinking tea can have a lasting impact on your wellness, as people have done for centuries. There are eight main types of tea, black, green, oolong, poor, white, herbal, mushroom, and fruit. Let's break them down. Black tea is the most common type and is known for its strong, bold flavor. Poor tea is a beautiful and refined type, aged to perfection or not, it, it depends. Green tea, on the other hand, is a more delicate, and has a subtle, grassy taste to it. Oolong tea is somewhere in between with a flavor that is more complex and nuanced. White tea is the rarest and most delicate type of tea with a light and a subtle flavor. Herbal tea has a soothing and subtle flavor, often with floral, minty, or spicy notes depending on the herbs used. Mushroom tea has an earthy, nutty flavor with a subtle sweetness and a hint of savory umami. Fruit tea is a refreshing and fruity beverage with a natural sweetness that is sure to brighten up your day. Each type of tea has its own unique flavor profile and is enjoyed by people all over the world. Black tea is a type of tea that is more oxidized than other types, giving it a strong, robust flavor. It is commonly enjoyed in the Western world where it is often served with milk and sugar. The most popular types of black tea are Assam, Darjeeling, and Ceylon. Assam and Darjeeling teas are grown in their titular regions of India, known for their bold and malty flavor. Ceylon tea is grown in Sri Lanka and has a rich, full-bodied flavor. But there's far more than these three. A common favorite is Earl Grey. Earl Grey tea is a popular black tea variety that is flavored with the oil of bergamot. I know what you're thinking, what the hell is a bergamot? Well, it's a fruit that looks like a lumpy green orange. Raw, the bitter taste is like being punched in the face by Mike Tyson. Fortunately, it improves significantly when manufactured into oils. The distinct citrusy aroma and flavor gives Earl Grey tea its unique and refreshing taste, which is often enjoyed with a touch of milk or sugar. 
liqueur is known as black tea in the Far East, but it's a unique type with its own unique process. This tea is post fermented, meaning an elaborate process of microbial fermentation. Funky way of saying, this tea is old but good. Unlike other teas where freshness is a criteria of quality, this kind sits for ages, like a fine wine. You can buy some that will be older than you are as a living creature. It comes from a strain of the common tea plant called Dea. Ancient trees with mature leaves that are anywhere between 5 centuries and 1,000 years old. The flavor is complex. The two types are Shu and Shang. Shu is like drinking from a treasure chest, like one you'd find in Super Mario 64's Jolly Roger Bay. Shang is like green tea, but with quality ingredients. You can often find these sold as tea cakes, which are like hockey pucks of good leaf juice. It can be pretty expensive though, with some going up to thousands of dollars. Green tea is a type of tea that is less oxidized than black tea, giving it more delicate and subtle flavor. It is commonly enjoyed in Asia, where it is often served with meals. Dragon well tea is grown in the Hangzhou region of China, with a nutty vegetal flavor. Such a tea is grown in Japan and has a bitter flavor. Matcha tea is made from finely ground tea leaves, often used with steamed milk for lattes. While most tea comes from the Camellia sinensis plant, herbal tea is a type that does not. Instead, it comes from a variety of herbs and spices, and it's often caffeine-free. Chamomile tea is made from dried chamomile flowers, which is known for its calming and relaxing properties. Peppermint tea is made from dried peppermint leaves that has a refreshing, minty flavor. These are but two. Anyone can enjoy this without prior tea experience or exposure. Mushroom tea is a type of tea that is made from, you guessed it, mushrooms. Don't go throwing any mushrooms you find in the hot water though. You ain't gonna turn into Super Mario. You might die, actually. You gotta find the kinds like Raisha, Shaga, and Lion's Mane. Mushroom tea has a slightly earthy, nutty flavor, and it's often enjoyed for its health benefits. Some might call this soup. They would be wrong. White tea is a delicate and subtle type of tea that is made from young leaves and buds of Camellia sensius. It has a gentle and slightly sweet flavor with subtle floral notes. These types are grown mainly in China's Fujian province, where the climate is perfect for producing high quality tea. The most popular types of white tea are Bai Hao Yinzin, Silver Noodle, Bai Mudan, White Peony, and Xiao Mei, Longevity Eyebrow. White tea is often associated with elegance and sophistication, often served at high end tea ceremonies. You can buy it on Amazon for $9 though. Oolong tea is a type of tea that is made from partially fermented tea leaves from, you guessed it, that Camellia sinensis plant. Most tea comes from the same plant at different aging points. That's right, you've been scammed. Oolong has a complex and layered flavor profile with a floral, fruity, and nutty notes. This tea is grown mainly in China and Taiwan where it has been cultivated for centuries. Some of the most popular oolong tea includes Tai Wan Jin, the Iron Goddess of Mercy, Dai Hong Pao, R Big Red Robe, and Oriental Beauty. It's manufactured using a combination of processes used in both green tea and black tea. Oolong is a popular choice among tea connoisseurs who appreciate its complexity and depth of flavor. Drinking it is truly an aristocratic culture experience. It is $6 at Walmart. Fruit tea is made by infusing various fruits, flowers, and herbs with hot water. Fruity and refreshing, it has a natural sweetness that comes from the fruits used. Often, you'll find ones with hibiscus, rose hips, or mint added to it. Whether or not fruit tea is considered tea or juice can be a matter of debate. Technically, tea is made from the leaves of that one plant, but fruit tea is usually made from a variety of fruits, flowers, and herbs. Some people consider fruit tea to be a type of tea as it is often prepared in the same way and has a similar flavor profile. This is the correct opinion. Others argue that fruit tea is more like a juice as it often contains a high concentration of fruit and can be very sweet. They are wrong. 
Where does tea come from? Can you grow it at home? You might be growing other types of budding plants in your hydroponics equipped attic or basement, but tea farming is a bit more complicated. Tea is typically grown in warm, humid climates with well-draining soil. The most common regions for tea production are China, India, Taiwan, and Sri Lanka. Tree bushes are typically pruned to waist height to make it easier to harvest the leaves. They do this because tea plants can grow to be 15 feet tall. You can't grow that in your house, silly drug lord. Hydroponics instruction may be illegal in some global areas, so we won't tell you how it can be done, only that it hypothetically can be done. In some regions such as China's Yunnan province, monkeys are used to help harvest tea leaves. We're not making this up. Fucking Harambe over there goes up into the mountains and picks tea leaves for us humans. These monkeys are trained to climb up the tea bushes to pick the leaves. They're rewarded with treats such as fruit or nuts for their hard work. Well, this practice is not very common. It is a fascinating aspect of tea culture. It's only a matter of time before a chimpanzee is making a McDouble and is setting like the 2000s hockey movie, MVP, Most Valuable Primate. Remember Jack from those hockey movies? He's dead now. R.I.P. Jack. Dicks out for Harambe. Tea brewing has changed significantly over the years, with new technologies and techniques being developed all the time. Some of the older techniques, such as Kung Fu brewing, are still popular today. However, many tea drinkers now prefer to use modern brewing methods, such as tea bags and electric kettles. Ignorant cavemen. You probably just boil water and pour it over a tea bag, don't you? You couldn't be more wrong. Metagaming is inherently part of tea culture. Get good. Black and oolong teas require a higher temperature of 203 degrees Fahrenheit or 95 degrees Celsius, while other types require a much lower temperature for optimal brewing. A difference of 30 degrees might sound completely obsessive. Yes. There's also optimal steeping times associated with each type of tea and brand of tea. Sounds pretty nerdy, right? Yes. Tea is a truly remarkable beverage that has played an important role in human culture for centuries. Whether you prefer a strong cup of black tea, a flavorful cup of green tea, or a soothing cup of herbal tea, there is a type of tea out there for everyone. From the literal monkeys that help harvest tea leaves to the health benefits of drinking tea. There are so many fascinating aspects of tea culture to explore. On God, I swear those monkeys exist. You can look it up. They literally pay the monkeys with fruit to go pick tea for them. We are literally buying tea from monkeys. Anyways, next time you sit down to enjoy a cup of tea, take a moment to appreciate all the hard work and history that went into making that perfect cup of tea, especially the monkeys. As George Orwell once said, tea is one of the mainstays of civilization. Or as I say, fancy tea water is pretty fucking good. Thanks for watching!